recording this, so uh, if we have any big important messages, we can let people watch the video, right? Yes. <laughs> Do we have any big important messages? Um, sí, es sobre diferencias culturales. Son dos diferencias importantes porque uno es uh, sobre... Creo que es sobre cómo somos o actuamos o nos comunicamos con las personas. ¿Y qué significa eso para la persona con la que nos estamos comunicando? Una cosa que tenemos los latinos es que cuando nos conectamos con alguien, ya sea por teléfono, por ejemplo, o siempre inmediatamente lo primero que decimos es hola, ¿cómo estás? Buenos días, hola, ¿cómo estás? ¿Verdad? Sin embargo, en la cultura norteamericana es, eso va más directo al punto, a lo que se quiere hablar. Entonces eso no, de alguna forma para nosotros es bastante descortés, es, es, no, no es apropiado y lo vemos como una falta de respeto. Porque para nosotros saber conectar con las personas en un, en un nivel emocional es importante y no es solo business, 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 okay? Sí. Es, es más, es más que eso. So what we're saying here, everybody, uh, or anybody who's watching the replay, is something that's really important uh, with cultural differences. And we just want to take two examples, one from the Latino side and one from the, the gringo side, right? Uh, and give two examples about our cultures and how we want to um, think about the other culture into our interactions and um, embrace some of these differences. So the thing that Anna just mentioned was that uh, in the Latino culture, when, whenever they start a meeting, even if they just, you know, talk to you that morning or last night or whatever, the first thing they're going to do in a conversation is connect on a personal level. How are you? Um, you know, and uh, especially the first time that you meet with somebody, it, you're going to want to connect with the Latinos on a personal level. How are you? Uh, try and ask questions more like, how is your family? Do you have children? Um, something about their lives or share something about your life rather than jumping straight into business like like so many gringos, North Americanos tend to do. It's like, okay, uh, what page are we on today? Uh, what are, where do we want to start? What lesson are we doing? Um, where are you from? What is your job? Uh, you know, we have a tendency to get straight to the point. You know, okay, we got a meeting. You know, we've only got 60 minutes. Uh, that's what we're going to do, right? If we come into the meetings with that, you know, really focused kind of thing, we don't make that personal connection. So that's the first thing that we're talking about is um, it's almost, actually, it's not almost, it is actually rude <laughs> to just jump in and start, you know, with business, 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 business. Does that make sense? Well, I promise you, if you embrace this difference in the culture, you're going to make more friends and, and make them faster. Uh, with with the Latinos because of that personal connection, rather than the pure business connection. On the reverse, ¿Sabes? una una cosa una cosa importante es es que es cómo vemos a las personas. Es en, en esto. A veces cuando nos conectamos con un compañero de práctica, al inicio es, es, es difícil porque no conocemos a esa persona. Es una persona que es diferente totalmente a nosotros, físicamente, eh, mentalmente, culturalmente. Es difícil. Entonces, no es que sean barreras, pero son cuestiones que, que a primera impresión nos hacen como no, no nos conectamos con esa persona. ¿verdad? Es, es como más difícil, es como, como estar ahí tratando de romper un enorme <ríe> bloque de hielo. Y algo importante, por ejemplo, es una, una cuestión, piensen sobre eso, una, una cosa que me pasó a mí con una clienta que James y yo tenemos. Y esto viene al caso porque esta clienta era una mujer 
hermosa, inteligente, eh, no sé, eh, mm. exitosa y es una persona que uno quiere admirar porque es una mujer súper organizada, que trabaja duro, que consigue lo que quiere. Entonces, por supuesto, yo al ver a esa mujer me sentía pues, una mujer que no puede admirar, que no quiere ser como ella. Pero esta persona nunca era incapaz de decir buenos días, buenas tardes. Entonces, a mí me molestaba muchísimo porque todo era trabajo y trabajo y nunca se tomaba la delicadeza de decir buenos días o buenas tardes, y no es que apre no apreciara mi trabajo, apreciaba mi trabajo, simplemente la idea que yo tenía de esa persona, que era una persona odiosa, que era una persona Amado. fea, Amado. Sí. Sí. Okay. entonces la cuestión es que yo lo que hice fue empezar a decir, ok, no le voy a responder a esta persona hasta que diga buenos días, entonces buenos días, ¿cómo estás? Y no le respondía a su pregunta hasta que ella decía buenos días, Eventualmente ella notó esto y cambió. Al cambiar ella y empezar a ser más amable con un simple buenos días, la impresión que yo tenía de esa persona cambió. Es diferente y ya uno se conecta a un nivel más, más personal. Yo creo que eso es lo que, lo que uno logra con esos detalles chiquitos. Muy bien, muy bien. ¿Everybody get that? Thanks. Okay. James, go so, so everybody might know that Anna and I have another business besides Sharelingo, which is very technical, very, you know, websites and uh, very technical website uh, creation and all sorts of things. So we have a client on the other business uh, who uh, came to us a year or two ago, and she was very, very, very businesslike. Now she's, you know, she's... Um, a good looking person, she's a nice person, she's very successful, but you know, she would start every email, every text, every meeting with, you know, just business. Like, I need this and I need this by Thursday, and and you know, very, very direct and to the point. And so Anna originally had this idea that she's like just not very nice person, and it was uh both of us Anna and i both are like wow she's really difficult to work with but anna started doing something when when this person would send a, a text with a message anna would not respond with an answer she would respond with like good morning how are you and this person learned to say good morning and how are you before we get into business and this little piece of the culture opened up this person and let her slow down and be more personable and we both got to know this person a lot better and it turns out she is a really nice person and um, you know we just had to make that connection on a personal level so that we could have a better working relationship with her. And that's the lesson is that, you know, we gringos have something that we can learn from the Latino culture about slowing down and make that, making that connection. So that is a really good example. Y por el otro lado, el problema latino es que tenemos un serio problema con la puntualidad. La puntualidad para nosotros no es importante. Decimos a las 3 de la tarde y estamos apareciendo a las 3 y 10, 3 y 15. Y si es una cuestión social, una fiesta con la familia, es una hora después, 30 minutos después, dos horas después. Y um, las excusas que nosotros siempre ponemos, oh, es latino time. <ríe> Okay, horario latino y no es correcto porque eh, para, para, para ustedes es una falta de respeto igual, ¿verdad? Eh, uno tiene que ser puntual, uno tiene que ser responsable, tiene que valorar el tiempo de los demás y que las personas tienen vidas y pues hay, hay una agenda casi siempre que uno tiene que cumplir a nivel personal y en cuestiones de trabajo. Y es, eso es algo que nosotros como latinos tenemos que, que evitar a medida de lo posible. Y si por alguna razón vamos a estar tarde, no nos cuesta nada agarrar el teléfono y mandar un mensaje. Estoy tarde o voy a estar 10 minutos tarde. Eh, haciendo eso, las personas comprenden, está bien. Ellos, ellos no sienten la falta de respeto de simplemente venir 15 o 20 minutos después a la reunión. Entonces, 
Ah, así como a nosotros la cuestión afectiva es importante, para ellos el tiempo es igual de importante. Entonces, la idea es tratar de asistir a las reuniones cinco minutos, estar cinco o diez minutos antes, es, está bien, ¿verdad? Si uno se conecta a tiempo, pues mejor, ¿verdad? Pero eh, como nos comentaba, es tener el respeto hacia la otra persona y la delicadeza de hacerle saber que van a estar tarde o que no van a estar cancelados. Esa es otra cosa. Nosotros no cancelamos las, las citas, simplemente no aparecemos. Citas, reuniones, lo que sea, simplemente no aparecemos. Y igual, entonces si uno no puede, pues mandar el mensaje y hacer la cancelación y tratar de posponerlo para otro día, otra semana. Ok, so, on the reverse side, there are some things uh, that... Uh, are different culturally between us. Uh, and what we're talking about here is an example. I mean, there's many things, but as an example, you know how we like to be on time. In fact, we have sayings like, you know, early is on time, on time is late, right? And late is unacceptable. Okay, but you have probably run across something called that we like to call Latino time, which is like, you know, Uh, they're five minutes late, 10 minutes late. It's like, uh, what's the problem? I'm here now, you know, like, what's the problem? So uh, we also want to um, be aware and, and we, <laughs> we want to be a little bit more relaxed, but Anna is also trying to, you know, let the Latino community know that, you know, that's really not acceptable for us. We have a, a really... Uh, you know, specific idea about uh, time and obligations and respect, and we might feel disrespected when somebody's late. They're not trying to disrespect us, but we might feel that way. Um, so these two cultural differences, I think that um, really the, the big idea that Anna and I are trying to share here today is that we can learn from each other, you know, that, that we gringos can be, uh, you know, more personable uh, and kind of adapt to and, and embrace that wonderful side of the Latino culture. But there's also, you know, things that the Latinos might want to embrace from our culture. Um, Anna uh, works with me, pretty exclusively now, right? <laughs> But uh, before Sherlingo, she was working with a lot of uh, a lot of other Americans and had to embrace this idea of being on time, right? So um, you know this this could be good for uh, if, if we're working with a Latino um, People, you know, this is also going to be good for their whole career or their their whole um, life, especially if they live here uh, in the United States. But even the the people who are living in Mexico or Nicaragua, Guatemala, um, it's like, okay, let's meet on time. In fact, let's meet five minutes early. Okay. Y la y por último um, es sobre las prácticas de Sherlingo es sobre cuándo y cómo prepararse. Eh, y, y esto lo vamos a hablar nuevamente porque en, en, el, en los, los estudiantes tienen diferentes niveles. Van a ver que eh, hay en niveles principiantes, básicos, intermedios y algunos en avanzado. ¿Verdad? Pero el, el asunto es este. A veces uno en un nivel principiante o cuando se une al programa lo, lo que quiere es empezar a practicar pero uno no puede solo por, porque me uní al programa ya inmediatamente yo puedo practicar con una persona eso no es verdad eh, uno tiene que sobre todo para los principiantes y los básicos tienen que aprender en el nivel principiante muchísimo vocabulario y repetirlo tantas veces como sea posible, cosas simples como cómo me llamo, buenos días, buenas tardes, hola, reuniones, cosas que vamos a usar con nuestro compañero de práctica. Pero 
no podemos pretender que a un nivel principiante estamos listos para ayudar a otra persona, porque no lo estamos. Somos incapaces de comunicarnos, es mucho peor eh, practicar o ayudar a alguien más, ¿verdad? Y aunque la práctica en Sherlingo se da en, en ambas partes, en, es bidireccional, al uno leer puede creer que le está ayudando a la otra persona, o al uno pronunciar o tratar de traducir. Pero como no tenemos un nivel suficiente para autoevaluarnos o ayudar mejor a la otra persona, no podemos eh, dedicarnos a la práctica. Entonces se entienda que eh, hay, hay un tiempo que uno necesita esperar, ¿verdad? Y eh, sobre todo con David, los que practican con David, David tiene su, su sistema, yo no lo conozco bien, pero él tiene una forma de evaluar a los estudiantes que, que funciona y tiene una forma también de prepararlos para, para que puedan practicar. Y él no solo se enfoca en la lectura. Si una persona lee bien, entonces está bien, él está listo para empezar, pero no solo eso, además de leer bien, tiene que entender frases básicas de comunicación. Si hace ambas cosas, que es el mínimo, entonces esta persona está llegando a, a un punto en que está listo para empezar una práctica tal vez guiada con él y con otro compañero, ¿verdad? Entonces eso es lo que queremos. El, el, ahora, una cosa importante que es sobre el tiempo. A veces nosotros queremos correr, pero tenemos que caminar, ¿verdad? No podemos este, tratar de avanzar rápido porque no significa que entre más rápido sea mejor, ¿verdad? Simplemente significa que hay que tomarse un tiempo para aprenderlo bien no olvidarlo y poder usarlo. Pero si no estamos ahí, entonces es imposible hacerlo. Y pues eh, a veces hay personas que nos dicen, bueno, es un método, es, es, es un proceso, no funciona para mí. Es un método que está probado no solo con los estudiantes actuales de Cholingo. Cholingo ha estado 10 años, es un programa de 10 años con miles de estudiantes, no solo online, sino a nivel presencial. Entonces es un proceso que, que funciona. Y la otra cuestión es de las prácticas. Les decimos que practiquen al menos dos veces por semana. Eso es suficiente. Porque la, la idea de nosotros es, no es que solo dos prácticas por semana van a tener. La, la idea es que al menos hagan algo cada semana, un poquito cada vez. ¿verdad? Y así poder avanzar. Thank you. She said a lot. I'll try and remember all the things that she said. So what Anna's talking about is this, this thing about, and I, I, might, uh, I might shorten this quite a bit, but we have different levels that we're at, uh, beginner, basic, intermediate, uh, and some advanced people who are doing this. And uh, we, we want people to understand, you know, that uh, what they're doing is different at different levels, um, especially with the beginners. And the reason we put you with David, first of all, is to make sure that you're ready to practice with another person with one of the Spanish speakers. As a beginner, there are certain things that you have to learn or even master kind of before you're ready to schedule an appointment to talk with the Spanish speakers. Otherwise, if you don't know how to say the numbers, for example, or you don't know how to, you know, even what Buenos Dias or, you know, me llamo James or soy ingeniero, you know, there's certain things that you really have to get a little bit comfortable with before you're starting to ask people, uh, what lesson do you want to do? What time do you want to meet? What day do you want to meet? Um, and all of those things. So uh, we have a path for people to go through this and get that comfort so that they can really get the most out of uh, meeting the Spanish speakers and practice with it with them but also from the spanish speaker perspective the beginners there also need to uh, be able to read right uh, and that's one of the things that david does with the beginners is make sure that you're at the point where you can read in spanish or they can read a little bit in english even if you don't know what you're reading just the <coughs> ability to read is is really important and everybody goes at their own pace um, We don't want people to feel pressured to go at a, you know, at a particular pace, like, okay, you have to do this in one month or you have to do this in two months uh, and that type of thing. Um, and I said, you know, a lot of people want to run before they walk. 
but um, it's better to walk before you run, right? Okay, um, what other points did you make, Anna, uh, that I need to say, or maybe you wanna say in English? Um. <laughs> Um, the process, there is a process that we need to uh, right. you know, follow. Right. Uh, yes, we have had people come to Sherlingo and say, this doesn't work for me. Um, you know, I think you have a good product here, but it doesn't work for me. I promise, we promise it works. Uh, you are not alone here. This is not what we've done. We have helped thousands of people, not just <coughs> online, but we've also helped people in face-to-face -face classes, uh, in, in businesses and in schools and all of that, that, you know, the pandemic kind of slowed down the face-to-face -face things, but I promise you that the actual formula, the process, the method, it works. You just have to be ready for it to work, right? Okay. Y les estamos diciendo estos, estos cuatro puntos porque no, a nosotros nos, nos interesa el éxito que ustedes puedan tener. A nosotros eh, nos importa que sean exitosos hablando inglés o español. Y para ello tenemos que recordarles algunas cosas que son importantes y sobre todo pues, eh, guiarlos de la mejor manera posible, ya sea con consejos o con, brindándoles alguna dirección que ustedes puedan seguir o que sientan que pueda funcionar. Eh, de la misma manera, yo siempre les, les, les comento o les digo cada semana que me escriban si necesitan algo. Pueden escribirme a mí, pueden escribir a Jen, pueden escribir en el grupo. Tienen un, un, un grupo de compañeros que todos son lindas personas, son, son muy amables, están dispuestas a ayudar. Y aunque algunos están ocupados, no significa que no quieran ayudarlos. Estoy seguro que más de alguno va a querer ayudar y eso es lo que ustedes tienen que que valorar es una comunidad única que ustedes tienen, un equipo que, que, que está aquí para ustedes, para apoyarlo en todo lo que ustedes necesiten. Y eso. Y eso. Sí. So, I got distracted. I know. It's cool. All right. So um, what we want most for you is success. Uh, that, is, that is what we want. We do this because... Uh, we want to connect cultures through language. We want to help people be friends with each other, to make lifelong friends, um, but also to share each other's culture and to um, explore the world and, you know, just, just expand your horizons, right? And so, but, you know, you, we are all passionate about what we're doing and we're here for you. You can write to us in the group in WhatsApp on Facebook. You can reach out to us individually, but there's also a strong uh, community uh, of people of the active people who are doing this. And, you know, lots and lots of people have gone through this program and moved on. They've found their practice partners and their buddies and they're doing things and they're, they're, maybe not in the WhatsApp group or the Facebook group anymore, but that's because they have done it. You know, they've gotten there. Um, and so this group that we have, this uh, in, in the WhatsApp group and in the, in the Facebook group um, and the team here um, are nice people. Like by definition, you know, the people who join Sharelingo are good people. Uh, we, we don't have bad people just don't seem to be attracted to us. <laughs> so, um, so no, don't you... we have a policy for those. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. we, we have a policy, but we haven't had to use that, right? Um, uh, James is nicer than me. <laughs> yeah. Anna, <laughs> Anna doesn't take any um, crap. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, but um, that, that's the point, though, is don't be afraid to reach out or ask questions or how do you say this or how do you say that or what does this mean or, you know, um, it's a safe place to practice. Uh, it's a safe place to meet people. Of course, you want to be careful who you, you know, meet face to face at midnight at, you know, the 7-Eleven. But, um, you know, be, be intelligent about the people you're going to practice with. But, uh, you know, the people who are in Sharelingo are, like I said, good people, right? 
Okay. Any comments about what we just said to everybody? Have you experienced any of these things? Have you experienced Latino time or have you ever been guilty of jumping straight to the point without saying good morning? Bryce has been smiling the whole meeting. <laughs> right. Why? Bryce, why are you smiling the whole meeting? Hmm? Oh, uh, I was smiling just because, well, me and Anna had kind of talked about this a little bit. <laughs> okay. uh, just because I was, um, you know, I have experience. Like, I think I'm a pretty courteous person. Um, <laughs> And uh, like, I have a problem, like say for example, at work, um, if someone comes up to me and says something to me like rude in the morning or, hey, do this or that, and they don't even say good morning, sometimes this kind of starts my morning off, you know, on the wrong foot because someone can, the way, you know, you we have incredible power over people, uh, negative or positive. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and you can have a big effect on someone just in the morning by, a lot of times someone comes up and tells me good morning all of a sudden i feel better all at once uh -huh. you know, so, absolutely so beverly any comments or things from your experience doing this yes with um ismailia we are actually a really really good um match and usually we talk a lot um almost like for the first 25 or 30 minutes we're just talking to each other which is kind of practicing before we get to the script uh -huh. we have an awesome time we're really goofy and silly with each other with each other and i've learned a little bit about her culture and vice versa so we have an awesome time so we definitely break the ice before we get into the lesson and so my my comment there beverly is when you make that connection and you become you know friends with each other it's so much easier to make it mistakes is. with those people, right? Yes, and, it is. It's yeah. not such a big deal. And she even tells me to like relax a little bit. It's not a big deal. It's okay. Right. It makes it yes, so much great. If we're learning a new language, we're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to make mistakes. That's the benefit that children have over us. Um, adults do learn a language faster than children. Okay. But the benefit that children have is they don't care about the mistakes, mm -hmm. right? And so if we can if we can make friends with somebody like Isbelia or Beverly, it's so much easier to make those mistakes in a comfortable way and just let them correct us. Well, in that case, um, have a beautiful week. Uh, next week is a holiday. Um, I know I will not be available. I don't plan to be available on a Monday. We're not sure if we're if we're not sure if it's going to be the Monday or the Tuesday or the Wednesday. Um, we have another commitment on Tuesday, uh, so we'll see what happens next week. But do try and practice with people. Reach out to Anna. Uh, you can reach out to me. Feel free to reach out to me anytime. It's just that I. I'm they don't reach out to you because you always say reach out to Anna. <laughs> but that's because Anna gets stuff done. Anna knows what is happening. Anna knows everything. And, and I'm, <laughs> I'm here. I'm happy to help, but Anna can help. And I just want to. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for being here this evening. Um, I hope you had a beautiful day yesterday. Uh, and that you have a wonderful week. And we will get together as soon as we can. Bye. Right. Okay. Thank Good you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Okay. Bye. Bye.